frequently the animals groom their wounds and for what period of time, and then total grooming overall as well, the frequency of that and the duration. This is Lisa, if you don't know what a bush baby looks like. Um, Lisa was in our study. She ended up being in the prayer group. And I have a picture here of a wound. You can see on her left paw, it was a fairly minor wound. Some of them can really get um, quite large, but you can see the fur is lost and the skin is abraded um, and it's an open sore. Measures were assessed at baseline and end of study. Blood samples were used for the physiological measures. All blood samples were taken in the morning between 7 and 9.30 a.m. Cortisol measures, we had, to have get, got the, we had to have gotten the cortisol within three minutes of the animal capture to control for artificial inflation of cortisol secondary to the stress of being captured in their cage and being brought into the lab. I stratified the wounds by wound severity. So we'll be looking at the more minor wounds, mild to moderate, and wounds that were more severe of moderate to um, severe severity. <clears throat> Procedure animal, the, the trial was double blind. It was someone uninvolved with the study that randomized the animals, dealt with the intercessors. All animals were treated for self-injurious behavior, so they all received oral L-tryptophan to try to help with their condition. There were two groups, the animals who were receiving prayer and tryptophan, and our usual care or tryptophan only group. They received the tryptophan daily, crushed in uh, yogurt and fed before their meal time. The IP was coincident with the first day of tryptophan administration and the prayer continued for four weeks. The intercessors were self-identified as Christian. They all engaged in a regular prayer practice. They all had prior experience with praying for healing from a distance. It was important to me to try to capture as many intercessors who had prior clinical trial prayer experience, and most of the intercessors in fact did. All held the belief that God wants all creatures healthy and whole. It was, I learned a great deal from this study in many levels, and one was uh, the number of Christian intercessors who would not pray for animals. Uh, believing that God would only want people to be healthy and whole. So um, I, I, I found them. There are those of us who uh, hold that belief. Um, and prayer was provided daily during the four-week time frame. The intercessors only received the animals' names. So they would have received a list that was Lisa, Sean, Daryl, Felix, and so on. That's all they received. There were intercessors who didn't even know what a bush baby looked like. Um, they were asked to pray daily within the specific study dates. I provided them with no feedback in terms of the animal's progress. They were told what the bush babies looked like so that they could have a, a, an image in their mind um, and desired outcomes. I opted for directed prayer but did not control to check to see whether or not the intercessors actually followed the specific directions. So they were asked to pray for effectiveness of the medication, that the behaviors become more calm and non-stressed, and that the wounds healed. Um, took a look by ANCOVA at wound immune and cortisol, variables controlling for age because of the changes in the immune system as one ages, it becomes less effective, and MANCOVA to take a look at the red blood cell variables and behavioral variables by T-test. Here's a snapshot of the IP or the intercessory prayer in the non-prayer group. Um, by gender, age was comparable as well. And let's uh, move into some of the goodies here. Um, at baseline, here's what the wounds look like. I have this divided up in three ways. So you'll see this is for both groups, intercessory prayer, non-intercessory prayer. IP1 and NIP1 are the mild to moderate wounds. And when you see IP2 and NIP2, those are the more significant wounds that the animals had. Uh, there was no significant difference at baseline. Uh, we can see that, in fact, the wounds are relatively comparable across both groups, although there was a fairly significant standard deviation that was accounted for by the animals that were down here. The wounds were quite different in the mild to moderate group, much smaller, uh, much less significant. And here's a picture of the wound area at baseline so that we see the prayer groups are on the left, uh, no prayer going to be sitting on the right on the graphs that I have. And there's about three quarters of a centimeter difference in the mild to moderate animals. Here we've got maybe a centimeter and a half 
that's uh, different between those two groups at baseline. The only significant variable, uh, no differences in behavior, wound area, and so on, the only significant physiological variable had to do with monocytes. And they were significantly lower in the group with the severe wounds. Okay. End of study. So what happened after four weeks of praying to the wounds? I've included the baseline data in orange here. So we can see if we take a look at the IP group off the bat, it dropped from a little over 10 centimeters to not quite two with a standard deviation that's markedly different from where we were at baseline. We actually see in the prayer that would, uh, the group that did not receive prayer, that although the overall size of the, um, well, the wounds and the standard deviation went down somewhat. Thank you, I'll move through this fairly quickly. Um, I'm down to five minutes here. So what we see happening is that the biggest change is in the animals with the more severe wounds, where we had three quarters of a centimeter difference there, we're down to about one and a half, but here we're down to not quite three centimeters, down from 20 centimeters in change. So um, a significant difference, I'm gonna move through relatively quickly so that you can see all the graphs, a significant difference in the end of wound area, um, here's what happened, remembering the graphs at baseline, we see that this is um, changed, decreased uh, in the less severe group and markedly in the more severe group. We also had significant differences in terms of red blood cell data. Everything was significant. What happened in red blood cells increased in the prayed for group. They decreased in the group that did not receive prayer. We saw hemoglobin increased in the group that was prayed for, slight increase in the no prayer group. Hematocrit also increased in the prayer group, less so in the group with no prayer. What happened to the blood cells themselves? Again, significant differences other than the concentration was approaching significance, the MCHC. The other variables were significant. Interestingly, the size of the corpuscle decreased in the group that was prayed for slightly, where it increased in the group that was not prayed for. So we have smaller red blood cells. There was a consequent change in terms of the amount of hemoglobin concentration with an increase in the prayer group. The monocyte levels, this was the only immune data that I had that changed. Remembering that the more severe animals at baseline were significantly lower, they change to become significantly greater. Here's what happened to the monocytes in that group. This was, I'm sorry, I've got my buttons off here. Um, here's where they were at baseline. That's what happened at end of study. So the animals that needed it the most got it where they needed it. Cortisol was not statistically significant, but I present this data because it was a power issue, clearly. Cortisol changed more in the direction we expected in the prayer for the prayer group than the non-prayer group, although there was a decrease in cortisol in the animals that weren't uh, prayed for. What happened to grooming? Changes in the direction that we would expect. The duration, not the frequency of the number of times that the animals groom, but the amount of time that they spent grooming their wounds was decreased significantly, and the amount of time they spent overall grooming was significantly decreased. And here's what those graphs look like. So in summary, the study supports IP-induced improvements in wound healing. The IP animals had greater reduction in wound area than the non-IP animals. One of the strengths of the study is the convergent data that suggests that there are in fact pathways that would lead to the improved wound healing on the part of the animals. To make some sense of the blood data, when we see increased numbers of red blood cells, hemoglobin, and hematocrit, that would support increased oxygenation which is critical to improve healing across time. Reduction in mean corpuscular volume, hypothesis, but perhaps that assisted with the extraction capability of being able to remove oxygen at the wound site by having somewhat smaller red blood cells. 
Um, in terms of the immunological changes, there's some debate whether or not monocytes or macrophages, and once they live in tissue, are important to wound healing. There's some question in the animal literature, but we'll err on the side that in fact they are. The significant improvement in monocytes may have actually supported the dramatic increase seen in the more severe group that received prayer. Uh, changes in grooming and a decrease in cortisol, though not statistically significant, certainly could have had 